how do you make a good game? Well, that obviously is a very subjective answer, but I'm a big proponent of looking at the data, and specifically data about where the game development industry is headed. As game developers, and especially indie game developers, I think it's important to see what the trends are in the current gaming market, and how you can potentially lean into those to help your game succeed given the current setting. Also, you should wishlist my game Castlemancer over on Steam, it really helps me out. Now, Unity publishes a yearly gaming report that highlights overall trends across the game development sphere. So I went through the whole 57 page document to get the key points so you don't have to. And just for some assumptions, the data assigns labels based on the development team size. So indies are considered one to nine people, midsize is considered 10 to 49 people, lower mid market is 50 to 149 people, upper mid market is 150 to 299 people, and large studios are any studio with over 300 people. So there are five key trends. The first trend is that indie game developers are shipping games faster and working overall less hours, which is honestly surprising to hear given the game development reputation of overworking. 62% of indie game developers shipped a game in less than one year, and we can see that roughly 50% of indie devs, so teams of one to nine, are right in that six to 12 month category, which I think is insightful, especially for the audience of this channel, as it shows that generally smaller teams are keeping their scope limited in favor of releasing faster or just generally more manageable games. In addition, developers are working less hours. We can see that large studios tend to have more average hours worked per developer, which actually surprised me again, as I would think that with more employees, you can distribute the work better compared to smaller teams, but I suppose with larger teams come larger projects. What's also interesting is that 62% of indies are using an average between five and 14 asset packages in their games. And this ultimately correlates with the faster development time and fewer work hours data point I mentioned before, as overall smaller teams can prototype quicker and utilize pre-existing materials and assets from the marketplace instead of starting from scratch. And a similar story can be seen in augmented reality and virtual reality games too. Now in the game development space, there is a lot of talk about quick prototyping and its benefits. Basically make a rough state of the game and its core gameplay loop to see if it's actually fun or not. 46% of indie developers are creating prototypes in less than a month, and almost 40% in less than three months. And that's much better than I can say for myself. The quick prototype time ultimately helps determine good ideas and filter out bad ideas much quicker. The second key trend is that there has been a shift to mobile, with large studios seeing a 44% increase in mobile-only development. So this graph is really interesting. We see that solo and indie dev teams saw a very slight increase of roughly 5% in mobile-only projects, and even mid-sized teams saw a 1% decrease in mobile-only projects. But large studios are really diving into mobile-only development. And anecdotally, it seems like every other day a massive studio is announcing some type of mobile companion game to their other console or PC games. In addition, from 2021 to 2022, Overall studio game builds have increased over 15% with massive studio growth in countries like Kazakhstan, Romania, Poland, Turkey, Norway, and France. This next graph I think is absolutely vital for us indie game developers as it highlights what genres are being made by what team size. So if you're just getting into indie game development, this can really help narrow down potential genres that are reasonable to build into as well as highlight potential competition. We can see that indie teams are largely making action, adventure, and puzzle games, whereas larger studios are much more likely compared smaller studios to make massively multiplayer games and racing and sports games, which again kind of just makes sense intuitively. The next trend is that larger studios are experimenting with more multi-platform games by about 16%, and roughly 88% of studios with over 50 people are making cross-platform games. What is also interesting, but not incredibly surprising, is that amongst multi-platform developers, 76% release on desktop first, whereas in contrast, almost 90% of small studios are only releasing on a single platform, with the majority, about 77%, choosing to release on desktop, which again generally makes sense as smaller studios have less resources to devote to expanding their game to different platforms. And what's even more impressive to me is that a majority of game releases have some sort of multiplayer functionality across all platforms. Personally, I have yet to dive deep into the multiplayer rabbit hole for my games, but I'm sure I'll get there at some point. Now the fourth key trend is that mobile players continue to rise, where global daily active users have increased 8% for the median game. And further is that even though there were more players, 
there was actually less in-app purchase revenue compared to the prior year, meaning players are opting for more ads-based or free models when it comes to mobile games. They even break it up by demographic on which group prefers which type of monetization. So if you're a mobile game developer, I would highly suggest looking at this to identify where your game and audience might fall. The split between in-app purchases and general ad revenue also greatly differs by the mobile game genre, where a hyper-casual game gets roughly 94% revenue from ads and only 6% from in-app purchases, whereas an action game gets only 26% of its revenue from ad revenue and 74% from in-app purchases. Now, the last key trend, according to this report, is that game studios are looking to maintain their game for longer, with studios increasing the lifespan of their games by 33%. Now, we can see the casino and card-based games are older than the prior year, and it seems that as team size increases, games are maintained for longer, which generally makes intuitive sense. 84% of teams with over 50 people continue to update their games for more than six months, whereas only 55% of indie developers push updates over six months. This is also a really interesting insight into some of the challenges different team sizes faced if you're thinking about starting up a studio. We can see that pretty much for all studio sizes, user acquisition remains the hardest challenge, with player retention in a close second. And going along with this, the data also supports that games with more updates will have better retention, which again makes sense. If you're adding new content consistently, it will bring and hold players that might have left during the initial release. Now, how can you actually retain players for longer? Well, there's also some interesting insight along that line as well. Most studios use some sort of achievement or challenge system combined with core game content updates to retain players. Some other strategies include leaderboards, daily rewards or missions, timed events, out of game methods, PVP, social features, modding and marketplaces. This is also a controversial data point, but battle passes have seen a large 27% increase in frequency followed by consumables with a 21% increase to supposedly help player retention. So that was all reflecting on 2022 data, but the report also features some potential trends to see in 2023. And since we are nearing the end of the year, maybe some of these have come to pass. So the first one is that economic pressure will foster ingenuity. I think this is generally a persistent trend. It seems every year new innovations in gameplay and graphics continue to roll out. The next anticipated trend is that smaller studios will launch more AAA quality mobile games. So I'm not totally familiar with the mobile game market, so I don't know if this is true, but I think it could be said for non-mobile games with recent releases like Baldur's Gate 3 from Larian Studios. The next forecasted trend for 2023 is that AI will become more involved in the game development process. So I do think that this is true. Game developers, including myself, have used AI to help solve programming challenges or just speed up development. There's also the whole AI art side, but that has faced pretty heavy pushback and games using AI art are even banned from Steam. The next 2023 trend, apparently, is that hybrid casual games will see a rise in popularity. I think this generally tracks as people have many formats to consume different media or entertainment so you could be listening to music, watching Netflix, browsing TikTok, and playing a casual game pretty much all at the same time. And lastly, player engagement will reach new heights through user-generated content. And again, I feel like this is a pretty persistent trend. Modding has helped some games stay alive for a super long time, like Skyrim. And then we'll see if that continues with games like Starfield. So I hope you found this report useful, and you can find the link in the description below. And hopefully some of the data points gave you some insight into the general game development landscape so you can release the most successful game that you can. That's all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I got some other videos cooking up. We do a bad British accent at the end of every video. Give me a little like or subscribe if you like game dev or tech videos. That's all for me, and hopefully I see you in another one. Bye-bye.